Welcome to the Dealing with Goliath podcast. The mission of Dealing with Goliath is to sharpen the psychological edge in business leaders with skin in the game who want to be more effective under pressure, uncover hidden value, and increase profitability. With expert guests across the business spectrum, we deliver gems of wisdom delving into their methods, their thinking and approach to business and life, and to problem solving. This is the double espresso shot of insight through our short interview format with five questions in around about 15 minutes. I'm your host, Al McBride. My guest today is Wendy Weiss. Wendy is known as the queen of cold calling. She's an author, speaker, sales trainer, and sales coach, and is recognized as one of the leading authorities on lead generation, cold calling, and new business development. Clients typically 3x the number of qualified appointments they can schedule with a corresponding increase in sales revenue and a shortening of the sales cycle. Clients include Avon Products, ADP, Sprint, and thousands of entrepreneurs throughout the world. Wendy has been featured in the New York Times, Business Week, Entrepreneur Magazine, Selling Power, Inc., Forbes, and various other business and sales publications. She's also the author of Cold Calling for Women, Opening Doors and Closing Sales, great title, and the Sales Winner's Handbook, Essential Scripts and Strategies to Skyrocket Sales Performance. Outside of her of high-performing business, Wendy is also a former ballet dancer who believes that everything she knows in life and business, she's learned in ballet class. Wendy, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, you're, you're very welcome. And where are you joining us from today? I'm in New York City, and uh, you might hear some sirens and horns out the window. That's just the way Amazing. it is here in New York City. That's the sound of New York that That's I That's the sound of New York. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, and thank you for joining us. Uh, so let's dive straight in. So who is your ideal client, and what's the biggest challenge they face? Okay. Well, you know how uh, if you're a business owner and you're really uh, frustrated and kind of stressed out because you're just not getting in front of enough people, the people that you want to talk to, and, and you think to yourself, well, you know, I'm really good once I get in front of them. I just can't get in front of them. And, and you've thought about, well, you could hire someone to uh, set appointments for you, or you could hire someone to do a lot of social media for you, but uh, it's an investment, and you're not sure if it's going to work. <laughs> and so you just kind of don't know what to do, but you know you have to do something, because let's face it, if you don't get in front of people, you're not going to have a business. Big time. Um, so those those are the people that I work with. Those are my people. And what we do is we help our clients get themselves in front of the people that they need to get in front of. We teach a very simple three-step method to set more qualified appointments, which ultimately leads to an increase in revenue. That sounds um, and, excellent. Yeah, it, uh, it does sound like you know it's far more a common problem than the opposite. Very, I, I don't know too many business owners or people with sales teams who are sort of complaining that they're you know they're awash with opportunities, and it's so much more, particularly with COVID, with you know oh I'd like a few more clients, and you know that maybe they want to specialize in who they have or anything like that. But it, I would imagine that there's a huge need for that, particularly now, and. Is that Absolutely. The case? Yeah, because uh, possibly pre COVID, you were used to just walking into a place of business and talking mm -hmm. to the business owner. Or maybe if you manage a team, those of you that manage a team of salespeople, they were just walking in uh, to the business. Or maybe you were going to a lot of networking events or trade shows or conferences. And um, that's not happening live right now. They're happening online, but it's not the same thing where you can't online, you can't just walk up to someone and start that conversation that you want to have. So a lot of businesses are really uh, stuck. Mm -hmm. How do I get in front of the people I need to get in front of? And the answer is your telephone. 
I was okay. actually on, I was on a panel a couple of weeks ago. One of one of the experts said, "Oh, the phone is dead because everybody's doing everything on Zoom." And I said, "No, the phone's not dead. You need a mechanism to get people to Zoom." Absolutely. And that's your telephone. Absolutely. That's fa it's fascinating because I would have thought there's, there's a wonderful intimacy on the telephone. And there's a, now it's become almost a novelty. As somebody said to me, you know, you know, I actually phoned someone on, on, on the phone the other day. Sort of, It's one of the least used applications or used to some people's cell phones these days, which is crazy. So there's a great opportunity there. So what are some of those common mistakes that people make when they're trying to solve that problem of getting more potential clients in, getting more of those conversations going. So what have people usually tried and, and they're getting frustrated with because it's not working? Well, one of the biggest mistakes that I see all the time mm. is business owners that say, I'm going to hire a salesperson. I'm going to hire yeah. someone to set appointments for me. And I say, great. What do you have in place for them? And most of the time, the answer is nothing. Okay. Now, here's the thing I, I uh, shared with you in, in my bio that you used for my introduction that I, mm -hmm. my first career was I danced in a ballet company. Um, I wasn't supposed to be the queen of cold calling. I was supposed to be a ballerina. Um, and I feel like everything I know in life and in business, I learned in ballet class. This is what I learned in ballet class. Warm up rehearse, perform. <laughs> and the problem is what most people do when it comes to picking up the phone to reach out to prospects is they just jump to the performance. Right. And they wonder why they find it so unpleasant and it's usually not very successful. Exactly. And when you do your homework, when you do that warm up, because you know, if you're a dancer, you don't just run out on stage and start dancing. Because yep. you're going to hurt yourself. If you're, an, if you're a professional athlete, you don't just run out on the field and start playing the game. You warm up mm -hmm. so that you don't hurt yourself. And then you practice so that you get that automatic muscle memory that you know how to handle yourself when you're out on the field or if you're a dancer and you're on stage. You're not going, hopefully you're not going, what step comes next? No, because you've rehearsed for months. So you, you, just know, auto, yeah. you just know. Mm -hmm. So um, the mistake that most business owners make is if they're if they're going to process, do the calls themselves, they don't do the preparation. They just get on the phone and then mm -hmm. they hurt themselves because they're not warmed up and they haven't rehearsed. Or they hire someone and they haven't put any of the pieces in place for the person they've hired to warm up and rehearse. So that person gets on the phone and the themselves. same problem, right? So it's it's just the same problem. That sounds very interesting because uh, it, it it's a very uh, it's a very good and valuable insight that if you're going to hand over your sales calls and that approach, that you have to know what you're doing in the first place to be able to educate that person as to what as to what you're all about and how to do it. Okay, very good. So you, you nearly have to be good enough. You have to be good at it in the first place to hand it over, whereas Absolutely. other people want to hand it over because they're not good at it and that's precisely the problem okay very interesting very good very interesting so what is one valuable free action that the audience can implement that will help them with that issue so it mightn't get them to the destination but at least it'll point them in the right trajectory well the valuable action that you can take really is to start to put the elements of the warm up in place and i know uh -huh. we don't have time to go in detail about what those elements are but essentially, your warm-up consists of identifying the target, identifying the challenge that those kind of prospects have that you can help them with, and creating the messaging, the scripts. Yes, you need a script. It just means okay. you're prepared. So you, you create all of the messaging and a process that you're going to follow. How, how many times to call, leave a voicemail, send an email. What, what are you going to do? What's the process? So those are the three elements of the warm-up. And you can do that yourself, um, or you might need to hire someone to help you with it. 
That's mm-hmm. what our company does. But, you know, that is something that you could start to put in place yourself. Right. And that makes a lot of sense that with that process, I'd imagine you've tried and tested a huge array of different approaches and that you have, yours is pretty optimized. Yeah. And, you know, when, when you say to someone, if you hire a salesperson, you say, go make some calls, or you say to yourself, I'm going to make some calls. There's all these decisions that need to be made. Um, Of course, who, and, and what are you going to say? But even more than that, how many times are you going to call them? Are you going to leave a voicemail? Are you going to send them an email? Are you going to reach out to them on social media? Uh, how many times are you going to do that? Exactly. What are you going to do if you don't hear from them? They don't respond. So there's, there are all these decisions, and you really want to make them ahead of time. And then you want to, to measure it, uh, benchmark it. Ah, that's a very interesting addition is the measurement. And what are, what exactly might be the key things to look at if you're going to start measuring? Well, we look at, uh, for a calling campaign, for an, uh, an appointment setting campaign, we look at dials, meaning how many times did someone right. dial the phone, conversations, meaning conversations with the decision maker, with the person you want to talk to, not with a right. gatekeeper, not with an admin, with the person you want to talk to. <laughs> yeah. And then appointments. How many appointments were scheduled? Like the one of the really stupid things that people say about cold calling is they say it's a numbers game and dial the phone 100 times a day. And if you don't get traction, dial the phone 200 times a day. And if you don't get traction with that, (laughs) dial the phone 300 times a day. That is not sustainable. That's not going to work. That points at, you know, improving your uh, your execution and your system. Yeah. The real numbers game that we play is about conversion. Of course. Convert your dials into conversations with the person you want to talk to, and then convert those conversations into qualified appointments. So we play the conversion numbers game. Excellent. Excellent. So with that in mind, what what might be one valuable free resource that you could uh, direct people to that would help them with that issue? Okay, uh, wonderful. We have put together a very special three guide bundle for all of you. Uh, the first guide in the bundle is it's called the Cold Calling Survival Guide. The uh, subtitle is Start Setting Appointments in the Next 24 Hours. So it's a step by step guide that you can use or you can give to a, a salesperson to use the phone to start setting appointments in the next 24 hours. Uh, We've also included the business owner's guide to scheduling more qualified appointments when their prospects are all completely freaking out. And that is (laughs) 12 steps, 12 steps that you can implement today to start bringing in business. And and I wrote this uh, just recently because of what's going on now. Right, that's so very very up to date and current. Yeah, yeah. So twelve steps that you can you can use to start bringing in business today, and then the third guide is just kind of a bonus. It's our resource guide. It's all of the tools that I use, that we use, that we recommend, um, and it's uh, you know data resources, software, wow. all sorts of resources. Um, for your business. That's fantastic. So those, those are the three guides that we put together for you. That's a, quite, a, quite an impressive bundle of goodies there. Thank you very much. Th- those are excellent. Those are excellent. Thank you. Uh, so what's one question I should have asked you that would be of great value to our audience, but I didn't? Oh, my goodness. Well, that was at the end of your list, wasn't it? And I said everything I know in ballet class, everything I know in life. <laughs> well, that was the thing. I wanted class. to get back to you on the ballet because it is, a, it is a very interesting analogy. I did want to pick your brain about that a little bit more. And I liked it. The very interesting on the warm up. Uh, I was I was going to ask you what other similarities or parallels do you feel there are in business or lessons? Because I'd imagine, you know, but ballet is sort of the epitome of artistic performers who make it look graceful and easy whereas you know how much discipline and, and, and hard work and application it takes i'm just wondering what what are some of those those parallels for you well here's the thing when you're training as a ballet dancer it takes somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to ten years wow 
to train as a ballet dancer. And uh, you start dancing. I started when I was five, but usually seven, eight, nine is the age that you start. And you take a ballet class every day, um, five or six days a week, Uh, especially as you get older, as you become a teenager. Uh, When I was a teenager, I was I was taking two, three, four classes every single day. A ballet class has a certain set structure. You do the same thing every single class. You start at the bar. It's B-A-R-R-E. And you do plies and tendus and degage and rond de You always do those steps in that order. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or dancing with American Ballet Theater. Everybody does the same thing every day, over and over again. What happens when you do the same thing every single day over and over and over again is you build the muscle memory. Of course. You, so that when you are dancing, you, you're not thinking, you're dancing. It sounds like you're, there's a huge process in building and then cementing and continually developing the fundamentals. Absolutely. Doing and the even, fundamental pieces first and doing them right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, even when I was dancing uh, with the ballet, I danced with Pittsburgh Ballet Theater and the Cincinnati Ballet. I took class every day. You just take class every day to keep building your technique. Technique is habit. Right. And um, I'm no longer dancing professionally, but you know what? I'm taking virtual ballet classes these days in my living room because you just keep taking class. That's what you do. Now, here's do you the thing. have a bar in your living room? <laughs> Um, I don't have a, I don't have a bar. Um, I use my kitchen counter, but I did build a dance floor. Okay. I moved all the furniture and I built a dance floor. Um, the, it will not take you 10 years. It'll take you 10 years if you want to train to be a a dancer. Um, however, here, here's the thing. If you go to class, you start when you're young and you just keep going to class. You know what? Eight to 10 years later, you are going to be a ballet dancer. It won't take you eight to 10 years to learn this prospecting skill. It'll take you a matter of a couple of months, maybe. We do, we do our core program in three months because that's all you need to learn this, this core skill. Just but 90 days. 90 days. That's but funny. you do the same thing over and over and over again. You get the automatic muscle memory. Um, and people that do our programs, they're just so... It, it's lovely to see because at the end of the program, I always ask them what's changed for you. Mm -hmm. And they all say some version of, Oh, now I just call up my prospect and I get them on the phone and I say what I have to say. And they book an appointment and they kind of say it like that. Like they're very, they're very blase. It's it's a new normal. I hate the phrase, but (laughs) using it's a new normal. normal. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So as you said, it's just become this habit that they can just do and, it's like making a cup of coffee. You just do it. Yeah. And the thing, the thing is, if, if I can rant for a moment, one of the really stupid things people say about this topic is it's always discussed in terms of love it or hate it. Mm. And there's a handful of, suppose, supposedly, there's a handful of people that love it and everybody else hates it. The opposite of hating this is not that you now love it. You know, I'm not here today to tell you you should love this. What we're actually aiming for is neutral. Mm. This is just a business process. It's a way to get clients. Mm-hmm. You pick up the phone, you talk to somebody. That's it. Nobody dies. I can imagine when you're good at it, it makes it a lot more, as you said, it's a lot less stressful and it can even be quite enjoyable and you're having conversations mm-hmm. with people and moving them through a process. I always thought it was kind of fun. But it was kind of fun because I was really lucky early in my career. Somebody trained me. Uh I I learned the skill. I got coached. And learning the skill enabled me to build a business. So the really good news for any of you that if you're not where you want to be, that's okay. You can. I I am not a genius. I was just really lucky because somebody taught me this skill. Outstanding. Well, thank you very much, Wendy Weiss. Wendy Weiss, the queen of cold, of cold 
Polling. It's a fabulous title, by mm-hmm. the way. <laughs> much deserved. Wonderful oh, stuff. Thank, thank you. you very much, Wendy. Cheers for coming on the show. Thank you.